Lord be with you, and also with you. Today is the second Sunday before Advent. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the Holy Mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. We sing our first hymn, which is number 217, Be Thou My Guardian and My God. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. 
the warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of war, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind, because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust, and their flesh like dung. Neither shall their silver nor their gold be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed, for a full, a terrible end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the responsorial psalm, the response is, O oh, blessed are those who fear the Lord. O oh, blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. By the labour of your hands you shall eat. You will be happy and prosper. O oh, blessed are those who fear the Lord. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine in the heart of your house. Your children like the shoots of the olive around your table. O oh, blessed are those who fear the Lord. Indeed, thus shall be blessed the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion in a happy Jerusalem all the days of your life. O oh, blessed are those who fear the Lord. A reading from the first letter to the Christians of Thessalonica. Now, concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labour pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The gradual hymn is number 24.
going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had received two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled the camps with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, you good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, you good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave! You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So. Take the talent from him, and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. From St. Matthew, this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We live in a world where the culture and cult of celebrity is seemingly all important. Do you get annoyed, like I do perhaps, with those who seem to have become famous just for, well, being famous? They have no obvious talents of their own. They don't do anything, they simply is that a good reason for them to be celebrated and famous and wealthy? Well, I don't know. Perhaps it's more my jealousy and greed speaking than my honest heart. Perhaps the same is different for you. I don't know. Give it some thought. Decide why you think that. But when I read this story of the master and the servants, the parable of the talents, I start off being rather annoyed at the treatment meted out to that, well, seemingly terribly unfortunate fellow who buried his master's talent in the ground. He really does seem to have come off terribly badly, drawn the short straw. Because, well, he starts off in the story with far less than everyone else. And when the master comes home and calls his servants to account, he gets sacked, dismissed, for simply being overcautious with his master's money. But when we realise that the talents of which the parable is speaking are not talents like singing or dancing or juggling, but great sums of money, perhaps we have a little more sympathy with the master and a little less with the servant. A talent was equivalent to a 70 pound silver bar. That had enormous power in terms of purchasing and was frankly an almost unbelievable sum of money at this time. Several times the annual income of a working man. We can't say that this 
third slave who was given just the one talent was enterprising or daring or industrious. Maybe he was lazy as his master said, because he made no attempt to take advantage or profit from the opportunity which his master had given him. The very least he could have done, as his master says, is take the silver, take the talent, and give it to a banker to invest. So at least when his master came home, he would have the money earned by interest from depositing it in the bank. His lord didn't trust him with much, and he didn't really require of him problem was that this third slave rather preferred to do absolutely nothing than take any risk at all. The master found that his excuse, which was his master was harsh and that he was scared of him, gave him no respite. And his master was unconvinced by his reasoning. Well, how about you and me? How do we treat the talents and gifts God has given to us? They may be great, as with the man who was given five talents, or seemingly small, as the man who was given but one talent. And yet each of them is a gift from our God, the Father of all creation, the Lord of the universe. He's entrusted what you have to you. How do you treat the gift given to you by God. It's our duty as Christians to make the best of what we have. And if we spend the whole of our lives as Christians and end up with nothing to show for the gifts given to us and the opportunities shown to us, we will have to account to our God and Father. We will have squandered the gifts that we have been given. No matter what our abilities might be, we still have to try to do and be better, to make the most of what we have. It isn't sufficient to say, I'm not as clever or talented. I'm not as important as the next person. No, God values and loves you for what you have and what you are now. And if we use the gifts that we have received from God, if we treat them well, if we expend them wisely, then those gifts and talents will flourish and grow. But if we keep them hidden away, bury them deep in the ground, then they will be of no use to us or to anyone else. The parable reminds us that our capabilities and our talents are often more than we think they are. Not just to make money or to sing or to dance or to juggle, or any of those things that we see on Britain's Got Talent, or any of those game shows. But perhaps your talents are more subtle. Are you kind? Then show kindness. Can you love someone deeply? Then love deeply. Can you visit someone in need? Then visit them. Can you pray for people who need prayer? Then pray for them. What are you doing with the talents that you have? We need to be people of faith who are doing rather than simply waiting in fear. Because sooner or later all of us have to decide whether we want to listen to those fears in our hearts that stifle love and life and growth, or whether we want to listen to the voice of our Lord and Saviour who says that you and I are precious to him. That we can have life and life in all its forms if we will only reach out our hands and accept the gift that we are given. All of us can feel inadequate. All of us can feel that we don't have much to offer. And all of us can be wrong. In the words of the old hymn, count your blessings. See what other people realise you're already good at. Be honest with yourself. Those talents and gifts that you have are given by God to be used, enjoyed, and shared with all mankind. It may not be a great and impressive talent 
which brings you celebrity fame and wealth, and a place on the television. But it might be something small and commonplace, which changes the world for someone else. Being a loving member of a family, caring for those in need, giving charity, visiting the sick, praying for those who need help, serving your community, doing those small things. All of them are signs of God's talents at work in the world. Even the simplest things that we do can be made precious and special by doing them with a good heart. Who sweeps a room as for this cause makes that and the action fine. In the first part of that hymn, the servant with this cause makes drudgery divine. This gospel is an encouragement to all of us to do our best, to make the most of the gifts that we have, to work to grow in the grace of God and share in his mission in the world, to allow the gifts that we have to blossom and bear fruit, for be sure that we will be judged by God for the manner in which we have used the talents that we have in the service of Christ, our community, and our neighbour. The end of the year is coming fast. Next Sunday is the Feast of Christ the King, and hard on its heels, the first Sunday of Advent. A time of readiness, watching, and waiting in also of working for the coming of the kingdom. Use your gifts wild and wisely, for you will make account for them. And now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, be ascribed as his most just you, almighty majesty, dominion, and power, now and forevermore. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Gathered together as a believing community, although separated and isolated in our homes, we acknowledge the greatness of God, our loving Father who is the giver of all gifts, and we make our prayers and petitions reverently to him. We pray that all the bishops of the Church, enriched by the Holy Spirit, may direct the flock entrusted to them in the ways of truth and peace and love, that their hearts may be turned to share the wonder of the Gospel. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray that we may receive a deeper appreciation of the importance of our ordinary lives, and that we may know and understand how the love of God can flow from the little acts of kindness which we share with others. May our hearts and minds be open to the wonder of this world and the possibilities which lie before us to serve our neighbour in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that we may always make the best of the opportunities that come our way in the service of Christ and neighbour. 
May we care for those in our communities and show Christ's love to the world. For he has no hands and feet but ours in this world to work his good and perfect will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that God may bless doctors, nurses, and all those in the caring professions who use their gifts to bring Christ's love and compassion to the poor, the lonely, the sick, and the imprisoned. From our own communities, we pray for all those suffering from coronavirus and for those filled with fear of it. For William Skelving, Steve Pearson and Ken Smith, and Jenny Smith and Shailen Pearson, who love and care for them. For Philip Mason, Regina Bordnett, Ava and her family, Gregory Cowles, Margaret Hull, Ned Windsor Cobb, Jeremy James, Sarah Thomas and her husband, for Tom Prince and his family, and for all in distress. Give them courage and hope in all their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant eternal rest in your kingdom to our deceased relatives and friends. All those we love and love still, but see no longer. We pray for the repose of the souls of all the recently departed. For Jill Thomas, Martin Moore, and all those we love and love still, but see no longer. For all those who mourn their passing. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and that light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, help us to remain faithful in the small things of life, so that we may be trusted with greater things when we come into your kingdom. Uniting our prayer to those of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints of heaven, we commend ourselves and all Christian people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, of your goodness, we have to pray this bread to all, which earth has given that human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of God. Blessed be God for heaven. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, of your goodness, we have this wine for all, who through the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God for heaven. Pray, brethren, that this my sacrifice of yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. <clears throat> no, Lord, be with you. It is. 
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so far the calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice, made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. We offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and we pull and we move, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, all mighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has commanded and taught us, we are born. Oh, no. 
peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his Son. Lord, I am not worthy to receive, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. Gracious Lord, in this holy sacrament, you have given substance to our hope. Bring us at the last to that fullness of life for which we long, through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. To him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Our post communion hymn is number 163, Angel Voices Ever Sing.
celebration, next Sunday is the last Sunday of the Christian year, the Feast of Christ the King, the Universal King and Lord of Salvation. The colour for that Sunday is a royal and majestic red, before we turn to the purple of Advent. Again, we will record and play for you a service for the Feast of Christ the King at a similar time next week. Now bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And our recessional hymn is number 428, Thine be the glory. Soul of Christ, sanctify me, body of Christ, save me, blood of Christ, save me, born to the sign of Christ, wash me, passion of Christ, strength me, O good Jesus, who gave me, live thy woman's time, suffer me not to be separated from me, from the nation that we defend me, the hour of my death, all the enemy come to me, who is thy saints, and we praise thee forever and ever. Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Ghost, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done to be according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for sinners now and at the hour of our death. Pray for us, the Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the bondage of Christ. Let us pray. For forth we beseech thee, O Lord, by grace into our hearts, that we 
we to whom the incarnation of Christ my son was made known by the message of an angel, made by his cross and passion, be brought to the glory of his resurrection, through the same Christ our Lord. 